So let's start with the uh, uh, chapter I know the best, non-structural components, uh, chapter 13, uh, ASC 710. Uh, and uh, as a lead into this topic, I like to uh, talk a little bit about uh, the history of uh, non-structural components uh, as an architectural subject. Um, and some time ago, I was exposed to uh, the uh, Parthenon in Athens, and the uh, Parthenon that you see today doesn't have uh, any non-structural components attached to it anymore, but at one time it did, and uh, the anchorage of those components was uh, remarkably sophisticated. Um, uh, the, the kind of uh, statuary that the uh, Greeks produced, as you can see in the photograph on the right, uh, was fairly sophisticated and it was often attached uh, only at one point uh, back to the structure. So they needed uh, uh, fairly sophisticated anchorage techniques and they had them. Um, I've taken photographs of uh, anchors that were used in the Parthenon. Uh, you can see the T-head shapes that they produced to enable those anchorages. Uh, also, uh, uh, in various temples uh, throughout Greece, you find the same uh, types of anchors, remarkably made with, uh, with an iron which has not corroded uh, over the uh, uh, millennia. Uh, those anchors were often encased in lead. And it's my own theory that uh, they used the lead not only to protect the iron, but also to provide some some relief, some give uh, in the anchorage to prevent a uh, fracture of the stonework. So just a little bit of background to, to say that this subject has been something that uh, we've been dealing with for a long, long time. Uh, more recently, uh, those of you who are in practice in the West Coast know about the, uh, and have worked on older buildings, know about government anchors that were used uh, in the earlier part of, uh, of the 1900s. Uh, to anchor floors to walls, and we often find them still in those buildings. Uh, and there was a, a general concern about the performance of parapets, and I would say uh, the concern for parapet performance and the subsequent rules that were put in place for bracing of parapets was one of the first areas uh, of emphasis in terms of non-structural component uh, behavior and, uh, and uh, remedial action. Uh, a lot of the effort uh, to deal with uh, the parapet problem came from uh, the experience of the Long Beach earthquake in 1933, uh, in which many structures had this type of damage, uh, and it was recognized that uh, the falling hazard presented by masonry like this uh, is acute. You can see here that the masonry managed to fall directly over the entrance or the exit uh, route for this building. Uh, we've seen this repeated in uh, many earthquakes where there is a large inventory of older masonry structures. Uh, uh, I visited the uh, scene of the second Christchurch earthquake and uh, uh, took photographs like this of masonry buildings that had lost most of their exterior uh, masonry material. Uh, and this type of damage uh, is obviously mostly uh, perilous for people that are out in the street or people that are attempting to exit the building. Uh, in, the, in the equipment world, uh, it's been known for some time that um, uh, it, it, equipment in the hospitals is a particular problem uh, if it's not anchored properly because the uh, uh, toppling of equipment like this means that uh, hospital facilities are non-operative uh, and can be non-operative for quite some time. Also, just uh, overturning uh, cabinets that are filled with medical supplies uh, can be a real problem. And uh, so the recognition that uh, it's not enough to make the structure be performance uh, enhanced, uh, we also need to do something about the contents of the structure, has been something we've been aware of uh, for at least a couple of decades now. Again, from the earthquake in New Zealand, uh, this is a similar scene from an office building that I was able to visit, uh, and you can see somebody was in such a hurry to get out of there that they left their shoe behind. Uh, you can imagine uh, what it's like in a space like this when things are flying around in the air, 
uh, and cabinets like this are toppling over. It's uh, it's very hazardous and, uh, and pretty scary for people that have been in that circumstance. Uh, in mechanical rooms, obviously, uh, there's a, a lot of anchorage and a lot of emphasis on uh, uh, how to put all of these things in place in such a way that they uh, will function properly under different thermal loads. Uh, and one has to balance those requirements against the requirements that these things uh, either don't fall apart under earthquake motions or actually, in the case of hospitals, remain operable. 